Good afternoon. Let's do a couple examples on the effect of an excise tax on a couple different markets. Uh, an excise tax is a per unit tax, so we're trying to figure out what will that do to the market. Uh, and another way to think about this is who's going to bear the bigger burden of the market? Is that going to be the folks on the on the demanding side, the folks that buy the product, or the folks that sell the product? Often when we do some kind of per unit tax, we're thinking that we want to uh, tax the sellers of the product because they're the ones responsible for the externality. We may also be affecting the buyers. So let's do this first example. So this is the uh, this is a paint can market example. And get it? I'm using uh, Microsoft Paint here. And so there we go. Ha ha ha. Okay. So let's say that the the paint causes some kind of externality, and an externality is an external effect uh, based on production. So let's we can think about it as pollution, or you're affecting somebody else in the community. And the value of that is going to be four dollars. So if we tax it, we should see a decrease in that kind of behavior, um, or we should also see, um, you know, we have we collect this tax so we can so the government can then um, clean it up. So what does that look like here? So I'm not going to start out at the zero. I'm going to start out right here. So at 50 units. Uh, they're producing those at a cost of six dollars each because that's where the supply curve is so that's two dollars and four dollars so now when they're producing 50 units the the sale price uh, or cost to the consumer now is going to be this uh, ten dollars right so I'm going to do this you know there's adding that four dollars to each uh, quantity level on the supply curve okay so here we go Okay, so all the way there. So now I've got this supply curve with the excise tax added in. So this is S plus four dollar tax. Okay, now after it's been collected. Now uh, I'm going to have this new equilibrium because the consumer is going to be ultimately paying the price here. So um, I use this green here. Okay, and so. Uh, so I've drawn this. This is the new quantity at equilibrium. It's pretty straight, I think. There. Oop. Just the mouse here. Yeah, good enough. Okay. And then the the new the new price at equilibrium is now uh, gonna be twenty three dollars because that's right here. Okay. So the new price after the uh, after the tax, it's going to be twenty-three dollars, and I got that from adding the um, quantity supplied at that level, which is going to be so the quantity at the tax is going to be three seventy-five. Okay, and then you follow that up to where it hits the supply curve plus the excise tax, which is twenty-three dollars. So this is the um, the seller's cost. So it's uh, Nineteen dollars are going to go to the seller, plus the four dollars to the government. Okay, so that's that's where I got that twenty-three dollars. Okay, so that's what the consumers are going to buy, and at that higher price, they're not going to buy quite as many. So we lose twenty-five units sold in the market. Okay, now what I want to know is who does this burden more? So I'm going to calculate something called the dead weight loss. The dead weight loss is the loss in consumer and producer surplus. Okay. So remember that the uh, consumer surplus was this huge triangle right here. Okay, and so we can calculate that. Remember that this is one half base times height, but I've I've lost this. Uh, I'll take a can of paint here. Here we go. I've lost the area in here. Okay. Oops. Okay. So that is my loss to consumer surplus, and I. I think I have screwed up because well that's okay we'll just we'll just do this we'll make it slightly bigger there here we go so this area here is the loss to consumer surplus and this orange area is going to be a little bit smaller here it's going to be the loss to producer surplus the old producer surplus was this orange triangle all the way out to here. Okay, and so um, we've lost a bit of that now. Okay, so 
uh, sellers will still sellers are going to lose this little triangle. Now you can already see that the that this effect, the bigger dead weight loss falls on the consumer, not the producer, and so that um, gives us kind of a rule we can do. Whoever's whoever's curve is more inelastic is going to bear the bigger burden of the tax. Okay, so. Uh, in this case, the, the the buyer's curve is more inelastic than the seller's, and so they're going to uh, bear the bigger burden. Or you could think of it this way: if uh, whoever's more elastic is going to bear a smaller burden. Okay. Okay. So how do we calculate this? So remember, any this anytime you're doing this triangle stuff, it's just one half um, base times the height. Okay. That's supposed to be an H there. Okay. So. Uh, in the case of the dead weight loss to the consumers, uh, or the consumer surplus, this is going to be, uh, it's going to be, uh, the height here is going to be 25. It goes from 375 to 400. Okay, so it's 1 half 25. And then we go, we're going to go up from um, 20 now to 23. So that's going to be 3. Okay. One way to think about this is that three dollars of that four dollars is going to fall onto the uh, consumers. Here. Okay, so uh, so now we've got three times twenty-five, which is seventy-five, and then half of that is thirty-seven dollars and fifty cents. Okay, so this is the loss to the uh, consumers. Now the deadweight loss to the producer surplus is going to be one half. In this case, it's just one because it goes from 19 to 20 right there times uh, 25. Okay, so it's lost 25 units. And so this is going to be 25, and then half of that is 1250. And so in this market, we just add those and we're going to get a, a dead weight loss, a combined dead weight loss of 50. Okay, so this is the effect of the market here. Now, if if maybe the government decided that uh, that wasn't enough, that maybe, uh, maybe we need to do like a $16 um, loss, or rather a $16 excise tax. So what we can do here is this was four, this is eight, this we can start with four, eight, 12, 16. This curve up here. Okay. And this is the supply plus the $16 tax. Okay. And now I can calculate the loss in consumer surplus here and the loss to producer surplus. So this would be this whole thing. We'll do this in purple here. This whole thing in this higher tax is going to be the loss to consumer and producer surplus. So you can calculate, you can actually just calculate the whole thing. So um, this goes from 300 to 400. So the dead weight loss here is going to be one half. Uh, the height of this thing is 100 times. Uh, we're going from 16 up to 32, so that's $16. And so that's uh, 1600, and then half of that is going to be 800. So that's the dead weight loss. And I just calculated the whole guy right here. Okay, so this is the loss after that tax. Okay, and you, can, you can add them up separately like that, or you can, you can do the whole thing. Okay, let's do uh, one more example here. This is a different market, different elasticities. So in this case, uh, let's say that there is, forget, I'm gonna cheat a little bit on this, here we go. So let's make it a little bit easier there, there we go. Um, <clears throat> so let's say that uh, for whatever reason, this market is generating a Let's see what the units are here. So 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so these are $1 each. So let's, 
let's say one, two, three, four, five. Let's say it's a five dollars. So this is some kind of widget market, and there's a five dollar excise tax, which means again means per unit. Okay, we want to know what the uh, what the loss and efficiency is. So, so five dollars, one dollar, two dollar, three dollar, four dollars, five dollars. So, one, two, three, four, five. It just goes up. One, two, three, four, five. So it goes up like this. Okay. So this here is this. Okay, so now we're only going to sell five units instead of six. Okay. So. This is after the tax, plus the tax rather. So the deadweight loss here is going to be one half, again, base times height. And so it's going to be this triangle here. We've lost this part of the market. Okay. And we can already see that uh, it's going to be slightly bigger on the consumer side than the producer side. But let's just do the total deadweight loss. So 0.5. And we're going from one, two, three, four, five. So, of course, it's the tax, and then it's just it's just one because it's coming from five to six. Okay, and so it's two point five is the deadweight loss, and and this could be per day. Um, you know, in this case, it's labeled as millions, right? So that would be two point five million. Is the day. So it sounds doesn't sound like very much, but it, Definitely could could be, um, and then if you want to figure out the tax revenue, so how much money is the government going to take in, just multiply whatever the equilibrium quantity is. So the quantity we'll call that Q star times the tax. Okay, so we'll just it's five, and it's really five million times this five dollar tax. Okay, so the government's going to collect twenty-five million dollars on that, with which we hope they use it to clean up whatever the externality problem is. Okay.